Join the Classic Game Room community to get your questions answered on Thursday CGR Q&A. The following review has been approved by Lord Garnet and the best of Classic Game Room. Welcome to your Thursday CGR Q&A. Last week was Pac-Man's 35th birthday. Stress ball. I played a few games in honor. Classic Game Room is on Blu-ray and Hyper Laser Vision album set. Don't forget to download your Classic Game Room apps for Android or iPhone. And here's a look at the upcoming Ethel the Cyborg Ninja comic book. I think it's coming along nicely. That should be available near the end of the year in print and digital. Now let's start with a question from games that I play. How would it have played out if Jar Jar Binks wasn't in Star Wars Episode One? Well, it would have been better, but that still would not have saved it. It's not a good movie. The writing is terrible. Let's see what else we got here. A bunch of questions. When am I going to finish Part 2 of Making of CGR? I'm currently making CGR right now at this instant. Got a bunch of footage. Haven't edited it all together yet. What are my thoughts on Doctor Who? I've always enjoyed Doctor Who. I haven't sat down to watch them all yet, though. One of those shows. Let's see, let's keep going here. What if Sega made another console? Asks Mega Video Gamer 1000. I would buy it. That's for sure. I wish Sega would make another console, but I think the era of game consoles is is sadly over. Like the days when you would get a real game console. And like the only thing it did was play video games and you plug it into your TV and play games. Like that's just that's gone. Games are going to be a service, like the new PlayStation. If you go buy a new TV now, you can get PlayStation built into it. I predicted that years ago. I also predicted that Jar Jar sucks. Years ago. Let's see here. What do I think is more comfortable? The original Game Boy Advance or the SP asks Blue Feb. Well, you know, the original Game Boy Advance actually is very comfortable, but it doesn't have a backlit screen. So in that case, I would go Game Boy Advance SP, which is my favorite handheld of all time. Love that handheld. We are Xbox 360. Well, they've both got a lot of games, and they're both cheap now. So, personally, I'd go Xbox 360, but the Wii's got a lot of good games, too. Let's see. I want to send you a couple bucks. What your, what's your support channel box on YouTube? This. If you want to help out Classic Game Room, we sell a ton of digital comics. We sell a bunch of, well, Classic Game Rooms. Uh, Lord Carnage is in print and, of course, DVDs and Blu-rays. What if there was a Truxton-style game with a space El Camino and flamethrower asks games that I play? Well, that would be the greatest game ever made, I think. It would be even better if KC and the Sunshine Band did the soundtrack. Oh, here's a good one. From uh, Logic is the Juice, what are your top 80s movie villains? He votes Hans Gruber from Die Hard. Well, he, he was a, certainly a good one. Alan Rickman's best performance ever. Uh, best 80s million, uh, bad guy villains? Well, all the bad guys in RoboCop. Uh, I, I, actually, I like Jack Nicholson's Joker in the original Batman and uh, Jack Nicholson going crazy in The Shining, which I think technically was 1980. So that would count. What else do we have? 80s villains. The Predator. Oh gosh, there's so many. The guy who was electrocuting Mel Gibson in Lethal Weapon. He's in all those movies. About the intro asks Carini79. Let's click on that one. Why did I replace the Banished from Earth intro? Well, occasionally I bring it back from time to time, but I try to keep the intro as short as possible because as much as I love big intros like Magnum PI and Miami Vice, they're way too long for a five minute video game review. So I like the intro to be like 15 seconds if possible while still getting a lot of information in there. So sometimes I bring the Banished from Earth back. I think we all know I'm Banished from Earth. I'm in space after all. Let's, uh, let's go to the next page here. I'm bouncing around these. What kind of beer do I pour into the CGR mug? Whatever's in front of me. That's from Truxton Vectrex 2084. That's a great username. Wish I'd have picked that one. Early bird reviews. Big question, good question here from Teddy Kong Country. Do you ever feel tempted to review games, items, etc. before you've gotten what you think is an appropriate amount of time with the product? I most certainly have, and that's not fun at all. That sucks the life out of a game 
when you try to rush through the game as quickly as possible only to find out it never ends. And you have to be an expert in every part of the game, all the multiplayer. You have to uh, you know, get the expansion pack to complete the game. I mean, new games are not meant to be played quickly. They're meant to take the rest of your life. So to rush through a new game is not fun. That's why I typically don't do too many of them anymore. And I think that uh, people are watching live streams these days for new games. You know, Classic Game Room, at this point, it's clearly a fan-supported variety show. And I set my review schedule. I review what I want when I want and spend as much time as I want with the game to give you a good review. Because also the audience will sniff it out if I don't spend much time with the game. Uh, what do I think uh, the video game industry lacks most these days, asks Snipers, one Illuminati. Uh, this all ties into the same thing. I, I think the whole industry is changing a lot right now. So we're just seeing a lot of change in both what, how games are made, what the games are like, and how games are reviewed. In many cases, you can't even review a game. Because somebody's going to have an exclusive review right to it, or a stream right, or whatever. So, I'd prefer to review Sega Genesis games and Atari. That's pretty much what I think. Average lifespan of a clone. Well, they get shot out the airlock so quickly, who can say? Let's see, Stand Up 109, Godzilla stomps Jar Jar, as he should. Uh, I haven't heard about the new Godzilla games, but... Hopefully it's better than some of the old Godzilla games. Do I think Earth Defense Force 4.1 will have a Western release anytime soon? Asks Rafini. I have no idea. Email the email the publisher on that one and ask them. Let's see. What? Who actually banished you from Earth? Asks Studio UAC. Who banished? It's not so much a who. It's a what. Nobody. I chose to leave so that Classic Game Room could conquer the universe. We're flying around space right now, destroying planets. In fact, there goes one right now. Sorry. Prime Directive? Screw that. Let's see. Bottom 10 Game of the Year awards. Well, that would require me to play the bottom 10 games of the year, which I don't want to play any more than most of the top 10 new games of the year, to be honest. Will Tekken 7 be any good? I have no idea. Tekken games are usually pretty good. Teddy Kong Country asks, are reviews always going to be somewhat subjective? Well, a review is by nature subjective. If you get an objective review, that's a marketing message. So, um, sadly, more and more corporate reviews are just nothing more than marketing messages. Hey, have fun hearing what the company wants you to hear. All right, got a question here from Rennie Six. FC Twin versus Classic NES or Retron. Uh, well, you're welcome. I'm glad you're enjoying the show. Uh, you should always start your morning with strong coffee and the latest Classic Game Room review. They go really well together, coffee and classic game room. Now, your old NES is in need of refurbishment, refurbishment, or should you buy a, a Retron 3 or FC Twin? You know, there's two schools of thought on that. Some people want the original hardware and, and the original NES. We'll, we'll use the uh, NES Advantage and the Zapper, whereas the Retron, uh, well, I guess a Retron kind of does sometimes, depending on which Retron. And the FC Twin uses the Super Nintendo controllers and does not work with the Zapper or the Advantage. Now, I like my FC Twin a lot. I use that for a lot of the game reviews. Uh, but from time to time, I just I actually steal or borrow, borrow Derek's classic NES and use that when I need to use a Zapper or the Advantage. Uh, I've, tried, I've tried fixing my NES several times and always failed, so I just typically go FC Twin. But, you know, some people want to keep the classic NES hardware and you can do that as well. So I, the FC Twin's actually really good. I like it. So, Bill Paxton versus Jean Claude Van Dan. I love the versus questions. Asks Robertles. I don't think we should have Bill Paxton versus Jean Claude Van Dan. They need to be in the same movie, hanging out together. <laughs> Here's a good question from Ben Drown 33. How did I feel when I saw Star Wars: The Phantom Menace for the first time? I saw it a couple times in the theater because I, the first time I saw it. It was like the music came on. It was like Star Wars for the first time since I was a kid, right? And it was incredible. And then it's like my halfway through the movie, it's like, eh, hmm. This really isn't that good. I, I need to see it again. Maybe I, maybe I was tired or you know, drunk or something. I don't know. So let's, let's watch it again. I think that was like 99 or 2000, so we definitely hit the bar beforehand. But I uh, saw it a couple more times. And like each time it was like, yeah, yeah, this, this movie kind of sucks. Easily the greatest disappointment in film history. That the uh, Star Wars prequels. Want to buy a Laserdisc player? Asks Ed209. Well, if Ed209 wants a Laserdisc player, Ed209 should just stomp on something and get a Laserdisc player. 
I want to get a laser disc. Uh, what the best place is to get a laser disc player? You know they're heavy, which makes shipping a pain in the ass. Uh, I recommend Craigslist. Check Craigslist, and I think that a good laser disc player is one that has S video output because that that means it'll be one of the newer ones. So I would not go and buy one of the like super premium ones unless you have money to spare, like the Elite models or Denon or something. Like a decent Pioneer or Panasonic with S video output should do the job. Make sure to get it with a remote control. Atari 7800 versus NES asks Rodbot. I love both of them. I mean, I had a 7800 when I was a kid. Everybody else around me had an NES. I finally got an NES, and you know, I like them both for different reasons. They have different game catalogs and totally different look and feel. The 7800 is backwards compatible with the 2600 games, and that's really cool. But the NES is the NES, which has a lot of amazing games. So you really can't go wrong with either, to be honest. What are my thoughts on DLC and season passes? Well, it seems to be the way of the future, along with freemium games and games that just never end. So I don't particularly care for it. I'd rather just buy the game and have the game, but, you know, that's just the way it is. Genesis versus Vectrex is now a thing, or Genesis plus Vectrex? Have I ever seen Genesis controllers modded for the Vectrex? Yes, in fact, I reviewed one years ago. Do I recommend any books about video games? There's a lot of video game books out there. My favorite is Lord Carnage, the comic book. Of course, I am heavily biased. Uh, Zmangs asks, Hey Mark, of all the games that you own, what are the top five most rare and valuable games in my collection? I have really no idea. I don't typically collect for, um, for value. Just, just because a game's expensive doesn't mean it's, it's good. That usually would just mean it's rare. Now, now in the case of Guardian Force or Truxton or Metamorphic Force, all games sent to the show by fans or the the Sega SG-1000 or Mark III, they're expensive because they're rare, but they're also good. So, I don't even know. I, Sword Quest Waterworld was my original copy of Sword Quest Waterworld. And, ooh, the air conditioner just went off. I hope that means oxygen doesn't go next. Would Lord Carnage be a Nirvana fan? Nirvana's pretty good. Alice in Chains and Soundgarden are better. Have I ever reviewed or played a Mega Man game? You know, I played Mega Man when it was new. I loved Mega Man back in the day, but now I try to play Mega Man and I can't get through the first level. Which, you know, is kind of a problem if I want to review the game and show that I've played the game because I suck at it. Uh, I just don't have time to play Mega Man anymore. Like, I I think Mega Man games are great. If you're really into side-scrolling platformers that are tough. Let's see here. Airwolf beats Blue Thunder, but... This is coming from Leon79. Can Jan Michael Vincent beat Roy Scheider? No. What do I think of the Nintendo theme park idea? I absolutely haven't thought of it. And don't plan to. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I don't like theme parks all that much, to be honest. They're, they're, they're incredibly expensive. They never have any good beer. And I just, I don't like roller, I don't like roller coasters. So it's like, I don't want to go to a theme park. My favorite ride to a theme park is the ride home. Always love saying that. Let's see, have I ever taken time to read uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure? You know, I haven't read that yet. I, I, I like the games. The Dreamcast one, the PS3 one. I just, I haven't gotten around to reading them yet. Maybe one of these days. What do I think of Nintendo putting 64 at the end of most N64 titles? Well, that certainly made it clear that it was an N64 game. I don't have a problem with it. Um, from a marketing standpoint, it makes sense. But there's also Hyper Neo Geo 64. And my favorite, the Sega 32X. Was there a Mario Kart 32X? There should have been. That would be interesting. Mark, why hate on stealth games? Asked Nintendo Genesis 2600. I don't hate stealth games. I just typically don't like to play stealth. I'd rather run into the room and like destroy everything than sneak around. It's a video game. I like to just blow things up in video games. Let's see, what console or video game is your uh, threshold between classic and current? Well, I'm old, so for me, classic is the you know Atari 2600 or Genesis or something, but... I think that depends on uh, who you are and what you grew up with. So you make that decision, not me. Thoughts on Pixels? I saw the uh, preview last week before Mad, uh, before the new Mad Max movie. I meant to tell you about that. What do I think of the Mad Max movie? I want to say it was fun. It was a good action movie, a good ride. But like the character of Mad Max, the original character of Mad Max, the Mel Gibson character, uh, they gave him a lot of depth. I like good character development. And I really just 
enjoyed the, the original Mad Max movies. The new one just had a different style, and it was almost more about Charlize, whatever her name is, her character rather than, than his character. And while it was fun, I need to see it again before I give you, like, a real analysis. Like, it wasn't bad. It was far from bad. It was fun. Was it good? I don't know. Kind of picky these days. Especially when rebooting one of my favorite series from back in the day. They definitely captured the weird and extreme feeling of, of Mad Max, so I liked that. But I can't say it was great yet. Anyway, one of my thought, thoughts on Pixels... It looks like it could be good or awful, I don't know. Let's see, Mark... When I finish a game, do I watch the end credits? Asked B -Ro B Ross 2300 Uh, no. Usually, I, whenever I finish a game, it's like 3 in the morning and I'm exhausted and just turn it off. Or skip through the credits. So no, I never watch credits. I... I don't watch credits in movies either. I'm not a big credits fan. Ruffians vs. Scoundrels, asks Teddy Kong Country. How'd I go Scoundrels? Would the R-Zone be better if it had Truxton? Asks Truxton for Vectrex feet. <laughs> no, the R-Zone blows. And Truxton would not degrade itself by being on the R-Zone. And let's see here. One more question for today. That's all I got time for. Revisiting games from old videos. Mark, have you ever considered revisiting games you reviewed back in 2008 or 9? Yes, I am uh, for the new upcoming Classic Game Room Greatest Reviews series. So you'll see a, a bunch of re reviews. In fact, I just uh, re reviewed Pac Man on Atari 2600. Just as bad as it always was. See you next time on your CGR Thursday QA. Play some Sega 32X this weekend. The Best of Classic Game Room is now on DVD, Blu-ray, and Hyper Laser Vision album set. You are now in the R-Zone! Resistance is impractical! One might say it's an act of futility. In fact, they did just say that. Woo! Hey! Top Gun for the NES! One might call the R-Zone... The Danger Zone!